deliver Welcome back to Investor Stream. On Wednesday, Sagasco raised $5 million from a strongly supported placement to fund the company's share of the costs for drilling Borba. I understand you've also decided to reduce your working interest in Borba to approximately 67%. Can you just talk me through the strategy behind that decision? Thanks, Alex, um, for the opportunity to have a chat. The strategy is quite simple. We're we'll trying to answer it in two parts. Firstly, you know, we raised money uh, because we needed funds to drill Borba. The joint venture is between Xstate and, and Sagasco, and uh, the two boards uh, took the correct view, in my opinion, that funding and drilling the Borba well between the two companies offers uh, tremendous upside for all our shareholders. And moreover, because Borba has the potential to be a huge prize that justifies self-drilling and, and secondly, has a, a lower risk profile. Sagasco reduced its equity from 76% down to 67% uh, through a, a promote to X date of one and a half for one roughly. So in other words, it, we'll get a, a bit of extra funding from X date to reduce our funding needs to around 62, 63%. And we'll uh, both get on and, and drill the well. You know, obviously, you know, from the response to the capital raise, it's clear that the shareholders uh, strongly agree with the strategy of self-funding and between the two of us, and uh, that's the way we're going to do it. Thanks, Gary. Now, we're all obviously waiting for the drilling to commence at Borba, and you've flagged that drilling is imminent. What's the latest from the ground there, and when can we expect you to start turning to the right? Operational timing, Alex, is always fraught, um, as I've said many times before. And it has been raining quite heavily in the last week uh, at site, but uh, we're expecting a fine weather period uh, later this week and into next week. And uh, we expect we'll be able to move the rig then. Uh, I anticipate, and I say this with the normal operational uncertainty proviso, that we will be drilling within two weeks, you know, if not earlier. Uh, equipment is being tested and ready to move to the drill site as soon as we can do so without damaging the access roads. We've chosen the, the rig and uh, the crews are, uh, are getting themselves ready, uh, so we'll, we'll be to turn to the right pretty soon. Now, last week you also reported a second consecutive transaction in Alberta under what can only be described as excellent terms. In your opinion, why are these assets becoming available? And Where's the immediate upside for Sagasco and your operating partner in terms of production gains? The low oil price in the middle of last year resulted in financial difficulties for many debt burdened oil and gas companies. You know, their lenders put pressure on the owners to sell assets to reduce or eliminate debt. Uh, this, along with my view, uh, some ill-formed views on a coming rapid reduction in oil demand and uh, bankruptcies resulted in fire sale conditions for assets, in, particularly in Canada. Our colleagues at Blue Sky were on the ground to scan the markets and uh, select attractive undervalued assets for acquisition. They'd, they had already done that previously. And uh, so far, our group has uh, selected two sets of assets that fit our strategy. The immediate upside is in returning idled and shut-in wells to production, particularly as oil prices increase. With this last acquisition, we've, we've actually been producing since the 18th of January. You know, so we've been oil producers in Canada already on that one, and we expect to close the other uh, Red Earth acquisition uh, in the next couple of weeks or so as well. Okay, Gary, so you mentioned the Red Earth acquisition there as well. In, in terms of your growing portfolio of assets in Alberta, do you think there are further opportunities here for you? And how do you plan to aggressively scale up field operations? Our operators in Canada and California are on the lookout for additional assets of interest to us that fit our strategy. Key operational people have been retained for the Canadian assets and, and they're keenly looking for ways to improve production. You know, after we've uh, optimised production, we will look at development opportunities, particularly in the Red Earth properties, where there, there are more of those than there are for the Alberta Plains properties, this latest acquisition. Alex, these are pretty exciting times to be in oil and gas. Uh, please remember that a good flow rate at Borba will lead to further drilling and development activity in that premium and, and massively undersupplied local natural gas market. 
you know, and that's something for all of us to eagerly prepare for. Thanks, Gary. As you said, plenty to, to look forward to, and uh, certainly the first half of 2021 is looming to be quite a significant one for you. So, again, really appreciate you joining me today, and all the best with upcoming operations at Borba. Thanks. Thanks.